Spanning decades, from his raw, blues-driven performances in the 60s to his soul-stirring solos in the poignant ballad Tears in Heaven, Eric Clapton has continuously shaped and reshaped the realms of guitar excellence. But beneath the legendary guitarist nicknamed Slowhand lies a man whose life has been as much marked by profound suffering as by spectacular success. This narrative attempts to trace the path of Clapton's journey a tapestry woven with strings of tumultuous personal struggles and musical ingenuity. In post-war Britain, young Eric found solace and expression through the strings of a guitar. Influenced heavily by blues legends like Robert Johnson and Muddy Waters, Clapton's early life in Surrey set the stage for a revolutionary sound. His time with bands like the Yardbirds and John Maul and the Blues Breakers marked him as a man destined to change the rock landscape forever. By the mid-1960s, Clapton had embraced the Les Paul and the Marshall amplifier, crafting a sound so distinctive that audiences were left spellbound. His joining and subsequent work with Cream, a power trio, not only pushed the boundaries of rock but also cast Clapton as an icon of guitar innovation. This period was marked by monumental albums like Disraeli Gears and Wheels of Fire, showcasing Clapton's synergy with Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker. Fueled by a blend of jazz, blues, and psychedelia, Clapton's guitar solos weren't just heard, they were felt, resonating with the generation. However, the Clapton's highs were often overshadowed by his lows. In the early 70s, his meteoric rise was harshly countered by a descent into heroin addiction. His raw vulnerability was later poured into Layla, a masterwork wrought from his unrequited love for Patty Boyd, then wife of his close friend George Harrison. This era was arguably his most tumultuous, yet it birthed some of his most enduring music. Post the Derek and the Dominoes phase, Clapton's personal battles with substances nearly eclipsed his career. His retreat from the public eye was marred by isolation and a near-fatal bout with addiction. Emerging from these personal trials by the late 70s, Clapton's music started to reflect a more reflective, mature synthesis of his earlier blues orientations. This period also saw him becoming an active participant in benefit concerts like the Concert for Bangladesh and later Live Aid signaling not just a revival but an evolution of his career and personal life. By the 1980s, Eric Clapton was not merely a survivor of rock and roll excesses, but an evolving artist who continued to surprise his audience. The release of Journeyman in 1989 marked a critical and commercial resurgence, featuring hits like Pretending, which showcased his blues-based prowess, meshed with contemporary influences. The 90s and early 2000s saw collaborations with a host of artists ranging from B.B. King to Sheryl Crow, demonstrating his versatility and commitment to exploring different musical landscapes. Albums like Unplugged also displayed a softer, more intimate side of Clapton, earning him numerous accolades, including several Grammy Awards. This era was not just about chart toppers, it was also about personal healing, epitomized by his deeply personal song, Tears in Heaven, inspired by the tragic loss of his son, Connor. It was a poignant reminder of Clapton's ability to channel personal grief into soul-stirring music, resonating with audiences globally. The tapestry of Eric Clapton's career is rich and diverse. As a musician and as a human, he embodies the dichotomies of pain and joy, destruction and recovery. Clapton has not only influenced guitarists like John Mayer and Gary Clark Jr., but has also left an indelible mark on the broader landscape of music history. His dialogue with genres, from blues to rock, and his fearless personal revelations through his music have etched him permanently into the hearts of millions. As Clapton himself grows older, his chords continue to resonate, a testament to a legacy that transcends time and tragedy.